Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again. This morning I heard the news about the unemployment rate going up because of this pandemic, the crisis that uh, has evolved from it. And I'm really thinking about what it will be like for the next couple of weeks if uh, there aren't any major changes. But then more than that, I think about something that's bigger than that. And it, I began to think about we the people and this opportunity that we have before us in this wonderful year, 2020, the year that the pandemic came. I mean, did some terrible damage here in America. And it did some damage all over the world, indiscriminate, just grabbing. And I'm thinking about this also offers an opportunity for the people of the earth to reflect a different way of thinking, a different philosophy of life. And it it's amazing because I look back and I think about what we the people basically uh, require. Those are things that are common amongst us for survival. All humans need that. And the other essentials that we have that are individual, you know, they're individualistic. They are individual needs. They bring particular joys and pleasures to individuals. And I think about that. And I think about all of the things that people want to do, need to do, and the desire to do. Everything costs money, 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 money. Even when you're sick, it costs money. When you want to do some research on something, you've got to cost money. There's a major problem, social problem, a health problem somewhere, and you need to do some research. you got to raise some money. Oh, it sounds so sickening to me. It sounds so sickening to me. I was thinking about uh, how many billionaires are there in the U.S. So I called up Google and asked Google. Google said there are 540 billionaires in the United States. 540 individuals, which means that these individuals and their entire family, for the most part, can live out a life doing basically what they want to do. Why? Because they got the money to do it. They can do this, they can do that, they can get people to do this, they can do this, they can do that, and you can keep on doing that on and on and on. 540 individuals and their families. Then I thought about, well, how many millionaires? And I found out, Google said that there were 11 million millionaires. Now that ain't many, but it's a lot compared to 11 million. 11 million. Now these guys, they who these millionaires, they can basically live, a, if they can manage their money right, they can probably live a decent life doing what they want to do. Not their families, just them. But this uh, short changes them and make them want to become multimillionaires and billionaires and make them want to become more billionaires and make, make billionaires want to become bigger billionaires and trillionaires. And when you start thinking about uh, billionaires over here partnering up with billionaires over there on certain things they do, but on them for the most part, they are not doing that because they are threats to one to the other because they each trying to be billionaires off of what the other one is a billionaire off of. So they're competitors, as it were. And I thought about that. Then I thought about over three hundred million Americans are just surviving. Some more and better than others, but all of them nonetheless are just surviving. Over 300 million. Now you got 11 million millionaires. 11 million, that seems like a lot. But when you compare it to over 300 million million is not even a teardrop 
in the bucket. 540 billionaires. Now, let me ask you something, ladies and gentlemen. We might have a difficult time trying to figure out what people were doing back there in our history that allowed for the creation and the making of something like that for a few handful of billionaires, another handful of millionaires, and the rest of the nation just struggling by. I can't even fathom what was going on in their minds to allow this to happen back then. But it's much, much, much more complicated for me to understand why we the people allow it to happen today. It doesn't make any human sense to me. It doesn't make any kind of moral sense. It is senseless. But we can do something about it. That's the grand old thing. We can do something about it. I think about all of us ladies and gentlemen, being able to do just what we want to do, just like the millionaires, just like the billionaires. Every last one of us being able to do what we want to do, just like the billionaires and just like the millionaires. Not trying to knock the billionaires down from doing anything that they want to do and their families. Sure, you're entitled to it. The millionaires, sure, you're entitled to it. But the other 300 million of you, you're entitled to it as well. So what we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to adjust the system. We're going to have to change the system around and make the system accommodate what we the people desire. And we the people desire that all of us can live as though we were billionaires, every last one of us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something. In order for us to be able to come up with a faction like that, we're going to have to change our way of thinking. This can no longer be a dog-eat-dog -dog world. This is going to have to be our world. Our world for us. And all of the goodness and all of the grandeur that we ever get out of life, it comes from us, to us, by the power of us. Something we can't see, can't touch, can't feel. But the evidence is made obvious through what we do for one another. We're going to have to change our minds. We're going to have to. I know we've never been taught anything like this. The churches, nobody has ever taught anything like this. But if you want peace, if you want prosperity, if you want freedom, if you want joy of life, if you want the fulfillment of your dreams, then you must do it. There is no way around it. You must do it. If you want your needs, your wants, your desires met, you must do it. And ladies and gentlemen, it will eliminate all the lying, the cheating, the stealing, the poverty, the crime, the violence, the hatred, the racism, the bigotry. All of these things would just dissipate. They have no reason to exist anymore. I'm telling you this, ladies and gentlemen, because if you let things go, and they do plan on everything going the way they have been going, even if this pandemic subsides, they plan on going the same way we've been going all the time. And that means struggling, especially now since so many people have died. They're going to tell you that they've opened up the market so you can get more jobs. That See, <laughs> that's what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you that certain things have happened and so certain other sufferings are going to have to be sustained uh, 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 for at least a while. So I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, that's what they are going to say. But I'm telling you this. It is over 300 million of us. And we don't need anyone from that 11 million to tell us anything because nothing they're going to tell us is going to take anything of those millions from them. And that billion dollar, billion dollar group, we don't need them to tell us anything. We don't need them to tell us a thing because whatever they tell us is going to still leave 300 million of us still down here struggling from day to day. So I say let us let us determine, let us determine that all of the resources of this earth came from a power that we can't see. It didn't come from no human being. It didn't come from no world government. It didn't come from anything but something we can't see. And no man, no woman, no human being can claim rights to anything that God gave. Now, we have been living like savages. 
and now the savage days are over. We're going to live like human beings. Beings. And it is our duty to live right down here on this earth just like we're living in heaven. And that means the things that I've just got through talking about. And so when we go to these polls, even before you get to the polls, I want the world to know, I want the nation to know that this is no longer business as usual. This is a changed nation. We the people are going to take back our leadership roles from those people who have sold us out. We are not mad with them. We understand why they did what they did. We understand why we allow them to do what they have been doing. But we also know that we are not asleep now. We all are awake. We all want to live. And we're going to all play our role. So young men and young ladies, when you're in high school, getting ready to get out of high school, we want you to know I want you to spend some time in school. Know who you are. Know what you want to do because the whole of the world is open for you to be whatever you want to be. We want you to come out of there. We want the counselors to give you as much counseling as they can to help you, to guide you in ways that you might need some guidance. And when you come out of there, we want you to be able to continue your education, whatever it is that you need, whether it's trade school, whether it's going into uh, university, whatever it is, because we want you to be prepared and we want you to enjoy it. We don't want no struggles. Education, the big problem in the past has been money. That's not a problem in, in the future. Health care, not a problem. All you old folks, relax. Health care is not a problem. All of the care that is needed for the human race to live decent and as angels, we're going to provide for it. And we, when I say we, we the people, one unto the other. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is something for you to think about. I'm going to leave it there. I've given you something to think about. And I know how you're going to think. But there's 300 million of us that's going through changes, struggling from day to day. 11 million of us can, can get by. 540 families can be taken care of while the rest of us are going through some changes based upon some stuff set up generations ago. And I say this is a brand new day. I'm not a member of that stuff. <laughs> I have, hey baby, this is a new day. What do you say? Thank you. Eddie Marcus saying goodbye for now.